All right, g'day, hi, and welcome. Okay, I'm at the Long and McQuaid store. I was just joking about how one of my subscribers might uh, buy it, come in and buy a guitar on me just so I can't buy it. Because you never know. You never what? You never know what your trolls will do, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I got to try some really cool stuff today, though. I got to try a Kingfisher bass by PRS, and I tried another PRS guitar, and... Man, I can't believe the quality of finishes PRS can put out for the prices they put out. Like, it, it, and, and it's not just the finish, it's the whole guitar itself. Like, 900 bucks and you got this guitar that plays like, an, like so well, right? Uh, but I tried a uh, very beautiful uh, Telecaster. Like, probably one of the nicest Telecasters I've ever tried. Uh, it was a Pro 2 series, so for that money it better be nice, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I've tried a lot of Telecasters in my life. I really have. And I gotta tell you, uh, we can go right on red, but that guy's coming kind of fast, so. Oh, look at that doggy go. Make one more stop. Pretty good, it's not even noon yet. I mean, I got to try the seven string with the fan fret, and I regret to inform you guys, I don't think the fan fret is going to be the solution I wanted it to be for the eight string. So the good news is I don't have to buy another eight string. Uh, the bad news is I'll, I'll never be able to utilize the eight string the way I want to use it. Like it's the tension issue on the, the F sharp and the uh, B, right? And if you don't have good tension or proper tension on your strings, you don't get clear sounds. You get either muddy notes or droning notes, kind of like a bass, right? That's why it's so important to have the tension right. So the fan fret was kind of weird. That's the first time I really tried a fan fret. And uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, that would take some getting used to for sure, especially doing guitar solos. Um, so the fan fret's not the solution I thought it was going to be. Uh, I tried a it was a nice guitar though. Like, in the, if you're you 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 spent some time with it, yeah, you you would be able you'd really enjoy it. There was clear advantages by the fan fret that I, I picked out right away. Uh, you know, such as uh, you know, like the shorter scale length for the uh, solo strings, a lot less tension on them, uh, made it a lot easier to um, made it a lot easier to play, right? And the other advantage was uh, not a huge advantage, but a little bit heavier of a sound because you got a longer scale length on the lower strings and slightly more even tension. Not so much heavier tension, but more even tension. And uh, it was a Jackson 8 string, uh, 7 string. And I tried a couple of Ibanez 7 string sh shorter scale length stuff. <sighs> Guys, that's... How many seven strings? I know I try. Okay, so when you try guitars, it saves you from buying a lot of guitars. The Mark Holcomb seven string. And I'm not saying this just because I bought it, but sound wise and playability wise. Okay, playability obviously the 25 and a half inch scale stuff is much better. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think that Mark Holcomb seven string is the best seven string on the market. It is just the, just the way it plays. Obviously, the way it sounds is just absolutely stunning because of that heavy baritone sound that's just so freaking bloody cool. But there's also um, just the idea that it, it um, the neck on it, you know what I mean? The, the, the neck on it, like that guitar is so bloody good. Man, I didn't realize just how good that guitar was. That's why you got to go in a music store and just try everything on I tried Kramer's today. I tried three Charvels today. Uh, you know, like, I mean, guitars ranging anywhere from, uh, like, $300 up to, like, uh, I guess, $2,500 or something. And then everything in between. And just try everything. Because there's some guitars you'll pick them up and they'll just, wow, this is really cool. Like, that that seven-string Jackson for 800 bucks is with the fan fret is a really cool guitar it is a really cool guitar um i tried a kramer uh beretta there i haven't tried one of those in years uh i tried a charvel dinkies dk uh, the dk22s uh, they didn't have a dk24 in there and i tried the uh charvel um uh what you call it uh sandimus right 
And the thing is, when you look at guitars online, one of the things you see is like, oh, a really pretty guitar, and you're like, oh, and you, you see like, okay, $1,500 or whatever. Okay, but what are you getting for $1,500, right? Um, like, is it better than what I have at home? And clearly there's nothing I tried today that was better than what I had at home, except for that Kingfisher bass was, even though it was only a four string, was so good. It was used though, and it was the, the blue burst one that the color I wanted. Uh, who knows? We'll see what happens in January if it's still there. I don't think that bass is going to sit there long. It's just too gorgeous. Um, if I was going to have a four string, that's the one I would want. That'd be like a lifetime bass. And they were about 1500 new. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous bass. Uh, and nice playability. It's PRS quality, right? Just a beautiful, beautiful bass. So I'm like. Okay, that plus the Telecaster, you know, I tried a couple of Strats, I went to a couple of Gibsons and whatever. But it's like I'm getting to the point where it's just I can't justify other guitars because I can't find guitars that are better than what I have. They have to be different, right? So seven strings, I know I want more seven strings because I'm turning into a seven string player guy. After playing a seven string live only once, it just, okay, that's the road I want to take. Um, but a Telecaster, you know, I want it for the classic Telecaster sound. Right, and I got my SG, so I'd like to have a Les Paul, a Strat, a Tele, my two SGs, um, maybe a third SG, possibly if I can ever get to try uh, a certain type. The PRSs, I'd love to buy like 10 of them. There's like 10 different ones that I like, but you know what I mean? Like, is it better than what you have? Y you know, like, I, I would say. The $900 PRS that I tried, never mind the pickups, we're not going to talk about the pickups, but just the playability and the fit and finish on that $900 was as good as any Gibson. Like, the, the there was no fret sprout, nothing like that. But that Telecaster was, it had the rolled edges, absolutely flawless fret work on it. Uh, for that price, it better be. But, you know, it's not a Shredder's guitar. It's a, you know, vintage, classic guitar guy, you know. So... I don't know what's going to happen in the future for my guitar roster, but I do know I'm like I'm getting to the point where I'm buying stuff that's so good that I need not want, and unless there's something way better than what I have, it's not worth it for me to buy anymore. But then again, I'm also like maybe I should double up on my Mark Holcomb uh, seven strings because, bam, man, so far out of like, I've probably tried about seven or eight eight strings over over time, ranging in all kinds of price, and I still think that might be the best one on the market. I kid you not. Uh, so far that I've tried. It, it is for the price, the price, the sound, the, the fit, the finish, the neck. The neck profile is absolutely, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Stuff to think about. Yeah, stuff to gaggle on and daydream about. And I love going into music stores, but I hate going into music stores. <laughs> you know, especially, you know, but I'm glad I don't have all the money in the world because if I did, I'd, I'd have so many guitars. It'd be, it'd be sickening. It'd be sickening. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. <laughs>